Hi, my sweet babies. It is week two of Classroom Chronicles. Here are the materials that you need. You need pencils and you need your I Ready lesson for the week. And at the end, of course, I have shout outs. I miss you guys. Make sure you are tuning in and you are engaged. Let's get into it. All right. This week's lesson is recounting stories. And one thing I love is it's a review. We've actually already done recounting stories. Um, but it's always good to go back over material because actually this was a skill that was hard for us to master. Um, but I will say that later on when you get to fourth grade, this skill is a setup for you to learn how to summarize a story. But the word recount, what does it mean, Miss Anthony? To recount something is just a fancy way of saying retell the story, right? And re the prefix means again. So I'm telling someone the same story again. But here's the key. Notice Miss Anthony put here. My key point is in my own words. You do not want to use the exact language that the author uses inside of the story. All you're doing is pulling out key points from the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story to create what we call a summary, okay? That's what we call recounting, retelling. Let's get into it. I have my pencil. In your case, you have your pencil. Santa's gonna use a pen. I have my pen. I've already annotated the first page, but I am going to review those annotations for you so you have those as well. And I'll leave them on the screen because I noticed my previous video, we had a hard time seeing them, but here they are. Um, I underlined retelling, retelling or recounting, and I put on there, under there, re. And what I could probably also add could be again, beside re. So I know that I'm telling the story again. Okay. Um, and I love that they use the word sequence. And we simply know that the word sequence or sequential order just means in the order that it happened. One thing that we're really going to hone in on and focus in on is beginning of a story, middle, and end. We know what BME means, but actually doing it in real time is what we're going to go ahead and practice with this week. Okay. All right. Ms. Anthony, for a key point, once again, uh, I'm going to say summarize and help me a little recounting, okay, which sets us up for summarizing is in your own words. Okay. The way we do it. Okay. We're only looking for main points or important details that we're taking out in order to make a summary of a story. Any minor details, you don't need them. When I summarize, I'm only looking for major details. When I retell a story, you only tell me the major points that happen because a summary shouldn't be as long as the story is. The next that's rewriting the story and you don't want to rewrite the story. You want to recount or retell the story, which means you only include major details or main details. Okay. All right. We're going to start with this and I love that they give us either a picture or a short passage to read. I'm going to read it and I just want you to watch how Miss Anthony is annotated and she's pulled out the main parts of this story. All right. Bundle sticks or a bundle of sticks. Long ago, a mother had three children who were always arguing. Your arguing sounds worse than the clucking of all the hens in the world, the mother told them, and she wanted them to stop. One day, she got an idea. She gathered the children around her, then she took a stick and broke it. See how easy it is to break one stick, she asked, but then. Then she tied three sticks together. She asked each child to try to break the sticks, but none of the children could break them. The mother told the children, we're just like these sticks. When we don't stay together, our family is weak. When we stay together, nothing can break us apart. It sounds like a central message to me. The children understood, and from that day forward, they didn't argue as much. <laughs> All right, so the beginning of my story, and notice how Miss Anthony has sectioned her story off into beginning, middle, and end. How do you do that, Miss Anthony? I simply look at the paragraphs. They've already kind of separated beginning, middle, and end for me. It's only three paragraphs. So more than likely, the first paragraph will be beginning, middle, and end. All your stories won't be like that, but you'll be able to determine, okay, this is mid-story. The beginning of my story normally introduces my character and introduces what's going on. Introduces my characters and what's going on. That's the beginning of my story. The middle of my story breaks down the plot. There's normally a situation and a conflict. There's normally a situation and a conflict or problem. It's the issue in the story. 
And then at the end of my story, normally I solve the problem or it's a resolution and it's a lesson that I learned. We know it as central message or moral of the story, right? Right here, I have my characters, the mother and her three children, and I have the situation. They argue. So I put it in one sentence. A mother wants her children to stop arguing. So this way, I've introduced all the characters and I've introduced the plot, the situation. Then I have, and notice I did it in one sentence. I put up here one sentence, guys. And then here, I have mother uses the stick trick to show children a bond. Okay, so we, we kind of already had the, uh, the issue the conflict introduced at the beginning, even though it typically goes in the middle. So in this case, we're putting here, um, it's not a resolution, but it's introducing us. It's furthering our plot is what it's doing. But this is the middle of my story. So I summarize it in one sentence. Mother uses a stick trick to show children a bond. And then, of course, at the end of my story, mother explains lesson and children argue less. Okay, so these are my three points. And really, you know, they always give us a chart to, you know, take us, our history makers, to write our information in along with our first little story. So if you pay attention, I'm going to put it up here close to the screen. I have filled in the chart already for you guys for this first one because I'm just modeling for you. So at the beginning, a mother wants her three children to stop arguing. Everything we just wrote, I'm just placing it in these correct boxes. That's the beginning of my story. The middle mother uses a stick trick to show the children how they should bond as a family and then or how they're stronger when they bond as a family. And then in the end, the mother explains the lesson, the lesson and the children agree to argue less. OK, so once again, recounting is just retelling the story. Notice how I didn't use the exact language in the story, but I did explain what happened in the story. And that's what it means to recount, which would eventually be to summarize a story. OK. All right, let's try with the second story. And lots of modeling because recounting was a struggle skill for us. And so hopefully we get it on this end because you can replay the video multiple times to make sure that we get it right. All right, brother and sister. And actually this story we've read multiple times as well. We see? All right, and notice I keep writing in my own words. All right, here's my close reader heavy box. I always annotate the box so when I am reading, I understand what I should be doing as a reader to be successful with whatever the skill is for the week. And in our case, our skill is retelling or summarizing a story. Underline the sentences that tell the key events. Remember what Anthony said? Key means important, major, necessary, significant. Okay, so I need it. We don't need minor details. If you look at it and you really believe that it's minor, more than likely it is if you're second guessing yourself, okay? Here we go. Each section is three, one to three sentences. So your beginning, your middle, and end will be summarized within one to three sentences, okay? Here we go. Long ago, a brother and sister grew rice to sell. Through the long summer, they worked together to, to care for the rice patties. And in the fall, they harvested all the rice, put the rice in the bags, and each got the same number of bags. I'm reading this first paragraph, and I see lots of minor details. All I really need to know from this first paragraph is there's a brother or sister that wants to sell rice, and they both have the same number. They both have an equivalent number of bags. Okay, so if you, if you wanted to, you could write here that one sentence summarize your beginning. Notice our middle has two paragraphs this time instead of just one. Remember, I said it won't always just be three paragraphs, but normally your beginning has a character and a plot, like a setup for the story, and your middle has a conflict, and then we get towards the end, you have a resolution and a moral of the story. Here we go. After one harvest, the brother announced he was soon to be married, so the sister knew her brother would need money for his new bride. Here's my problem, right here. She didn't feel like the rice was divided fairly, so she might, excuse me, so that night, she took an extra bag of rice to her brother's house in secret. But her brother, too, felt the rice was not divided fairly. So a sister had, because his sister had a large family, she would need more rice. So that night, the brother took an extra bag to his sister's house in secret. So both of them believed that they need extra rice to take care of their family. Such lovely siblings, right? The next day, the brother and sister counted their rice bags in strange. This is both had the same number as before. So that night, 
When the moon was full, they made another attempt, and in the moonlight, the brother and sister each saw each other carrying a bag of rice. They laughed because the mystery was solved. So, first of all, we love this story. We've heard this story, and I love it because it teaches us the value of family. But anyway, back to recounting stories. Here we go. At the beginning of my story, I said, in my own words, a brother and sister both have rice to sell. If I went to the middle of my story, the brother and the sister both end up giving each other bags because they feel like one needs it more than the other. They both have the same idea in mind. So they give each other each an extra bag. They end up, of course, with an even amount of bags, some math in there. And then in the end, they find out that they have both had the same idea. They laugh and they giggle. Okay. All right. Notice how Miss Anthony, and I put down here, I love it. Notice how as I underline, I did not underline, or I've already underlined, but I did not underline anything that was not necessary. Pay attention to that. Brother and sister grew rice, got the same. That makes one sentence to the side is what I could do. The sister and brother both felt like they, they needed extra for the other sibling, or the other sibling needed extra. You can write that in a sentence here. And then in the end, they both solved the mystery because they realized they had both done the same thing. Okay. So actually, I want you to try at this moment to take what we've annotated together and then write a sentence on the side of each of these. And then try to do that now. See if you can't do that. And it's not an easy task, but I do want you to give it a try. Because with recounting, it's, it's very tricky if you don't have anything to go by. As you're doing that, I'm going to turn to my next page. And you know, they continue to give us charts, but I'm excited about charts because charts make it easy. Take another minute to quickly write a sentence beside each paragraph. And I'm not going to do that for you. I want you to take a whack at it yourself. And then we're going to look at the chart and see what Miss Anthony has written in her beginning, her middle, and her end, right? the Jeopardy music. All right. Wherever you are at this time, we are moving forward. Let's look at Miss Anthony's chart. They have already given us what happened at the start of the story. And I love it. Because the brother and sister grew rice to sell, they both have the same number of bags. Do you have something similar? I hope so. Let's look at the middle. Sister brings brother an extra bag because she thinks he needs the money for his new bride. If you want to put for his new bride, that's fine, but that's definitely a minor detail. So try to remember, we don't need those minor details, right? Of course, the brother does the same. The brother has the same idea. He brings sister a bag of rice because he thinks she needs the money. I love these here siblings, right? And then in the end of my story, the brother and sister run into each other and they laugh because the mystery is solved. Make sure that your BME looks like mine. If you want to pause the video at any time, you may do that. Especially if you want to just look at what Miss Anthony has, or you want to pause and fill in. It'd actually be beneficial if you pause and then try it on your own and then push play. All right. Make sure yours looks like Miss Anthony's. All right. And our last story that we're going to tackle together. And keep in mind, I did say we're going to tackle it together. So we are going to annotate at the same time. Okay. All right. As I read, I'm going to annotate. But let's look at our close reader habit box. Um, Miss Anthony is speeding, of course, the lesson. Um, because I, I know no one wants a long-winded lesson. Um, and really, I'd rather for us to get to the point, make sure we review, hone in the points, and then try to master that skill. You can watch the video as many times as you need to. Let's go to our close reader habit box, guys. Which details would you include to recount? I would even add this circle here and I put retail or tell again. To tell again the story. Or to tell the story again. Underline the most important details. Watch us work together. Here we go. A long time ago, the bat was a tiny mammal and it had no wings. One day, the mammals and the birds decided to play a game. The birds played on one team and the mammals played on the other team. So I'm looking at the first paragraph. Nothing really has jumped out at me yet. They've introduced characters, but I'm not seeing anything important in paragraph one. 
The bat wanted to play with the mammals, but the mammals laughed at the bat's size. You're too small, they said. The plot is starting to build itself. Important to me. Here we go. So the bat asked to play with the birds, and the bird said, You don't have wings, but we can make you some out of a drum. The birds stretched the skin of a drum into wings. So the mammals didn't want to play with the bat. But the birds, they have welcomed the bat. The birds put the wings on the bat. Flap your wings. The bat jumped off a tree and flapped her wings. But she didn't fly in a straight line like the birds. Instead, she flew every which away in all kinds of a crazy zigzag pattern. It says the birds let the bat play on the team, and just as she had done before, the bat flew in a crazy zigzag pattern. The mammals on the other team could not catch that bat. The bat scored the winning points, though, for the birds. When the game was over, the mammal said, Who is that superstar on your team? Hmm. The mammals did not know what to say. Excuse me, the bird said, it is the bat. We gave her wings. The mammals did not know what to say. And after all, they had refused to let the tiny bat play on their team. The mammals had learned their lesson. From that day on, they let any animal of any size play on their team. Watch me say to do a quick BME model. And if you want to pause and tackle BME for yourself, now would be a good time to pause the video. All right. If you have push play, you are ready to move forward. Let's do this. Beginning of the story. I'm going to write here and I'll put down the clipboard as I write. So you can write along with Miss Anthony. I'm going to put here. Bat could not play with mammals. But birds welcomed her in. And I'm going to put here B. You should have something similar. I'm going to put M on the other side just so I have space. Birds gave bat. Wings. Which created a unique flying pattern. For the bat. I'm also going to put a second sentence here and put bat. One game. And then at the end of my story, mammals were shocked they learned to allow all animals to play. So when I have my chart, now all I'm doing is transferring information. That's all I'm doing. All I'm doing is transferring what I have here already, and I'm transferring it to a chart. As long as they give me a chart. I don't even think this is our last story. I don't think they give us a chart. So even if I don't have a chart, then I just don't have to do double work. I know what happened at the beginning, middle, and end. And if I need to go back and refer, which I might need to, then I can just simply flip the page back, guys. Number one says, number, I'm going to the question sets, guys. Number one says, number the items, and I'll put it here so we can see. Number the items to show the order of events in the story. Keep in mind, order of events is sequence. And I'm going to, here's what the question is asking me to number something. So I'm going to put a number sign here. 
Because a lot of I, a lot of us, we don't read the question. A lot of you all, you put lots of different things. A, B, C. You're putting one, two, three in this category. You put the paragraph you found in. It's not asking for the paragraph it found in. This question asks me to number the events in the way they happened. So the beginning of the story, the middle, and the end. I know that because they gave me three items to choose from. So that's that BME model. Once again, guys. Which one of these happened at the beginning of the story is the first question I'm asking myself. The bat flies in a crazy zigzag pattern. That happened at the beginning of my story? No, that's maybe mid-story. Possibly end of story. The birds make wings for the bat. They have to have a reason to make the wings first. So the mammals do not let the bat play on their team. That tells me the reason for both of these other two answer choices. So I'm going to say this happened first. Let's look at two and three. What happens after the mammals do not allow the bat to play? We know that the birds come in. What do the birds allow the bat to do is what I'm going to ask myself. They allow the bat to fly in a crazy zigzag. Well, no, he can't do that yet. He doesn't have what he needs. Oh, he's flying because they created wings for him. So I'm going to say that's number two, which leaves the first one is number three. Here's the order of my story. Mammals don't allow the bat to play. The birds take him in and they make wings for him. And the bat flies in a crazy zigzag pattern, causing him to lose, win the game. This is what your sequential order should look like, guys. All right, and then why do the birds win the game? We just kind of looked at that. But let me just go back in the passage just because I always say side text evidence. Let's see. The birds win the game. Where do they win the game? Oh, it's paragraph five. Birds win the game. Let's see. Let's see why they win the game. The birds let the bat play. Here's when they start the game. So I'm going to start at paragraph five. Jess says the bat had done before she had done. She flew in a crazy zigzag pattern. So the mammals could not catch the bat. Therefore, the bat scored the winning points. So it tells me the bat scores the point for the birds and she wins. But the sentence before that tells me that the mammals could not do what? Right. The mammals couldn't keep up. Which answer choice says the mammals couldn't keep up? Hmm. I agree. Guys, make sure you are. And this is our last story. And I'll leave it up here. If you want to pause, I have the answers that you should have. Remember that I'm only doing modeling and guided practice. It is up to you to practice independently by yourself. Right? So we can master that skill, guys. Once again, this is recounting, retelling, summarizing a story. Here are my key points. I don't include minor details on include major or important details and i use my own words to retell a story if you want to go back and replay it you can also i have some quick shout outs for those that have been reading on epic this week i wrote down the names so i would not forget guys deandre nancy kevin and Brittany. kudos to you because you have been reading i want you to continue reading on epic here's my reminder though for you guys do not just flip the pages, guys, and click finish book at the end. Because if you've only read 10 minutes, but you finish 13, 14 books, either you need higher level books, or you need to slow down and actually digest and comprehend that text. Ask yourself, could I pass an AR test if I took it on this book after you read it? And if your question is no, then you need to read the book again. Remember that Ms. Anthony said you need to read a book at least two times before you can say, I feel like I have successfully comprehended the book. Let me tell you this. Our skill this week is recount. If you cannot recount or retell the story, uh-oh, then you need to go back and reread that story. Let me encourage you to pick up a nonfiction text or one about history because we haven't really tapped into social studies. Although I did this week um, for students and for parents place a nonfiction article about ancient Egyptians. So make sure that you tap into that and answer those discussion questions to make sure that you're still staying engaged with your learning. Lastly, here's our code, a reminder, RRW7621. Click on your name, log in, and read, read, 
read. Later on today, and I'm going to end here, later on today, students, I am going to post a video starting a book to kind of get you engaged in a new text. And I just want you to see if you can recount that story. It's going to be a classic January Sparrow by Patricia Polacco. You guys know I love all things Polacco. But it is a classic by Patricia Polacco. Try to tackle it. Try to get into it with Miss Anthony. I will have the book. All you have to do 